There was a famous cartoonist many years ago. He said it takes two things to be a great cartoonist. Number one, you must have no desire, talent, or ability to be anything useful in life. And the second thing you need is to have been dropped on your head when you were a baby. <laughs> Luckily for me, I fit into both of those categories. And little would you think, when you're on your path to personal and professional development, trying to be your best, that the secret to success has been there all along. The world's most overlooked manual to personal and professional success can be found in a very unlikely source, the Sunday Funnies. Don't believe me? I can prove it. Jim Davis, the creator of Garfield, he is listed on Forbes as making over $125 million every single year. Walt Disney bankrupted many companies by the time he was 25 years old. He lost control of his major character, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, and had his staff stolen away from him. And let's not forget Mr. Charles M. Schultz, the creator of Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Linus, and Lucy, uh, because for most of his career, he was making $10 million every single month. $10 million a month, he did this for 30 years. He's been gone 14 years now. His income is still $100 million every single year. And those two monetary figures make my family very hopeful. <laughs> that not only one day might I achieve that kind of success, but also many years down the road that I will die. <laughs> so they can manage a very large inheritance, which is why my children have asked me not to have any more kids. They don't want to split the inheritance any more than they already do. And that's what we want from all of you today. We want to make sure that the day your will is read at your funeral, it's standing room only. And how do we get to that point? How do we get from here to there many years down the road on your path to success? Well, it begins by opening the Sunday funnies. And I did this when I was five years old. I knew that I wanted to be a cartoonist. Here was my plan. Draw, 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 die. Sound like a great plan. So before I go any further, I want to introduce you to the star of my comic strip. His name is Zed. He's pink. He's fluffy. He's about this tall. He's the reason I'm wearing pink today. And he is, brace yourself, walking, talking, dryer, lint. <laughs> because whenever I began drawing cartoons, I was always stuck in a basement studio drawing my cartoons and if it looks effortless for me to stand up here and draw cartoons, if it looks like I'm not working at all, that only comes from years of practice, of sitting alone in my room, honing and practicing my craft. That's why it looks so easy. And I ran out at 15 years old to my local newspaper, showed them my comic strip, and they said, this is great, this is wonderful, we cannot wait to start publishing your comic strip. They've been my loyal client ever since, and they still remain my only client newspaper that allows me the privilege to pay for my own subscription. <laughs> and that's called rolling out the red carpet in Carrollton, Ohio. So this is Zed, the star of my comic strip, and if you're remarking to yourself as to how cute he is and how adorable he is, there's a reason for that. He's modeled after me. <laughs> and don't worry, the further away you sit, the better looking I am. Now, when I was seeking out my mentors, seeking out words of advice from cartoonists that had been there and done that, I made many lifelong relationships that I value to this day, and there was one cartoonist. Chances are you've never heard of him. Chances are you should know who he is. His name was Bud Blake. He was the creator of the comic strip Tiger, and he sent me a little piece of paper on a very unassuming envelope. I was used to getting drawings, paintings, pictures of cartoonists in their studio, and here was a little piece of paper that did not impress me one bit. Little did I know it contained the seed for the words I built my career on today. Those words are work, study, learn, try. Those are the only notes you should take during this presentation right now. Work, study, learn, try. So moving on to the first word, work.
That may sound like an easy word, may seem like a no-brainer. Until I let you know, it took me about 13 seconds to say that word work. There's a book on the New York Times bestseller list right now. It took them 147 pages to let you know this word was important. <laughs> Whenever cartoonists work, they work from inside their studio, and chances are they have in front of them a blank sheet of paper, and they start brainstorming. They start trying to come up with as many ideas as possible, knowing that most of them are not going to hit the mark, but a few of them might just turn into gold. So what cartoonists are, in essence, they are gold miners. They're going back to their studio every single day, mining for that gold. Now, this little guy I'm introducing you to right now, his name is Brian. He is Zed's best friend and adopted brother. He's walking to school right now, and uh, Brian has a pretty big head, messy hair, crooked smile, tiny body, and very large feet, because I was always the kid in the back of the class, not doing my work the way that I should have. I was always drawing cartoons just like this, not knowing that there is a curse placed on the head of all cartoonists, and that curse is that life imitates art, because little did I know many years later I would become a father. I have two little boys at home, a 12-year-old little boy named Zachy and six-year-old Clayton, and wouldn't you know it, both of my boys look just like this. They have big heads with messy hair, crooked smiles, tiny bodies, and very big feet. <laughs> Cartoonists all work every day. It may not look like work. They sit down every day. Their goals are their doodles, their comic strips, their ideas, their notions. What you should have in your possession at all times is your goals. Are you writing down your 30-day goal? Are you writing down a 60-day goal? Do you have a one-year goal, five-year goal, lifetime goal? These should all be written down someplace, just like a sketchbook, just so they can be referred to at any given time, so you can look at them every single day, review them. That's the only way we know to get better at anything, by work and practice, practice, practice. Might sound easy, but it's probably one of the hardest words I'm going to talk about today. Now, to delve further into the Sunday funnies. Some of your favorite Sunday funnies that you've been reading for many years are drawn by men, usually in their homes, not wearing any pants. <laughs> there was a cartoonist. He didn't work from a basement like I did. He worked from an attic, a very well-insulated attic. He was dedicated to his craft every single day, and he was blistering sweat. He would consume his clothes in perspiration and sweat working in this hot attic. And when he came downstairs to be with his wife and children, because he invested in all of this work, he would smell so bad. And his wife found out there's only one thing in this world that smells worse than a wet dog, and that's a smelly cartoonist. She insisted he find a way to remedy this problem. And luckily he did. He would always show up to work in his attic wearing a smile, and that's it. So the next time you open the Sunday Funnies and you read Beetle Bailey by Mort Walker, I want you to remember the first couple years of Beetle Bailey were drawn by a naked man in his attic. <laughs> and who says drawing cartoons is not a glamorous profession? Now, the next two words I'm just going to touch upon, uh, they are study and learn. Right now you are here studying as much as you can, learning everything possible, so that puts you on the building blocks to success. Cartoonists are amazing at absorbing ideas and then reintroducing those ideas with a different twist, a different way of looking at things. There was another cartoonist named Hank Ketchum. He would work all day from his basement studio, and one day he'd put his little boy down for a nap, went downstairs to his basement studio, and his wife came barreling down the steps, banging her fist against her husband's drawing board. And she said, Hank, your son Dennis is a menace. He's been dismantling his room, not taking his nap. Your son, Dennis, is a menace. 
And the light bulb went off, and Hank Ketchum created Dennis the Menace, all because his wife was yelling at him. And he was able to study that. He was able to absorb that idea and reintroduce it as a comic strip that's been in newspapers, on television, and coming soon, the Broadway stage. He's made his creator a multimillionaire. And yet Hank Ketchum's reward this one night in 1950 from his wife was he got to sleep on the couch. Because <laughs> he forgot to help his wife clean up their son's mess. So tread lightly in all of this study and all of the learning. I don't want anyone here having to sleep on a couch anytime soon. Now, my last word of the day, probably the hardest out of all four, is the word try. There's a very good explanation, because whenever you look at a cartoonist's studio, you see a few pencils, a few more pens, and you see dozens and dozens of used, broken, dirty erasers. Cartoonists know they're going to make mistakes. They know not everything they do is going to be a home run. That's why you can judge the quality of someone's work as a cartoonist by how good the work is that's been thrown away and is in the wastebasket. All because of that word, try. Because a cartoonist is not a professional until he knows how to fix all of his mistakes. So he tries every single day knowing that he's going to fail. Now to be in the Hall of Fame as a baseball player, you need to hit a home run or a good size hit every three out of ten times you're at bat, about 30 percent. That puts you in the Hall of Fame. And cartoonists will draw and write 20, 30, 40 ideas knowing they might use one or two. The rest will be thrown away and are in the wastebasket. There's always the chance to try again. There's always the chance to be just a little bit better. So because of that word try, because I believe in it so much, I believe in Northeast Ohio because there were two kids that tried their hardest during the Great Depression to sell a creation that was done just up the road in Cleveland, Ohio. Their names were Jerry Siegel and Joseph Schuster, and they were so poor they couldn't even afford paper to draw cartoons on. Did that stop them? No way. They would just take wallpaper, rip it off the wall, turn it over, and keep drawing. And it took them three years of trying three years to sell their creation, and I'm so glad they never gave up. Their creation, first drawn in 1935, would be published in 1938, is Superman. Superman was created just up the road by two kids that refused to give up, not any older than any of you right now. Now, because of the word try, I can bring it full circle right now and tell you a story about a cartoonist who in 1947, he was trying. He was living with his father above a bar, trying to be a cartoonist. And he was also dating a girl, a beautiful 18-year-old redhead named Donna Mae Johnson. Now, she was being courted by all of the boys in town. She was also dating a handsome, rugged, captivating gentleman who was going to be a firefighter. And Donna had to choose between a skinny cartoonist living with his father above a bar or handsome, rugged, muscular firefighter. Seems pretty dead even if you ask me, but I'm biased. This young girl chose the firefighter, turning down the marriage proposal of future multimillionaire cartoonist Charles M. Schultz, and he never forgot her. As he kept trying, he later developed the little red-haired girl, the object of Charlie Brown's unrequited love, all because of a girl who in 1947 broke his heart and turned away the opportunity to be the wife of the wealthiest cartoonist that ever lived. And I used to tell that story to every single girl I ever dated. <laughs> a sort of a cautionary tale. The only girl I'd ever worked on is the girl I've been married to for the past 12 years now. So my challenge to all of you is why not, on this coming Sunday, sleep in, 
That's homework assignment number one. Number two, on Sunday, after you slept in, wake up and have the biggest breakfast you're going to have all week long. I'm talking the sausage, the bacon, the hash browns, the pancakes. I'm giving you full permission this Sunday. And then, while you're enjoying your breakfast, the biggest breakfast you're going to have all week, visit some old friends. Open the Sunday funnies. Introduce yourself to a few new friends. They've been waiting on you. Dennis the Menace, Garfield, Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Linus, and Lucy. They're there every single week. They want to say hello to all of you. There are secrets to share. The secrets of work, study, learn, try can be found every week within the newsprint of the Sunday funnies. So, I couldn't resist. I wish you all of the best, and I will see all of you in the Sunday funnies. Thank you very much.